Welcome back to the wizard shop. Feels like it's Christmas right now, but I promise you it's not. You guys have seen this in a couple of previous videos and you're like, ooh, 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 what about that car? Well, we're gonna do that car today. I got the customer's permission to film this car. It is really, really cool. Here's your early Christmas present, guys. A green car and a red truck. Actually, the, both of these vehicles are owned by the same customer. We've had this in the shop just for here for a little bit while we were diagnosing it, and a couple of people were just really, really excited about it. And I, I don't blame you. This is a really cool car. It's a very, very special car. This is a 1973 Buick Centurion. It has the big, huge 455 V8 in it. What's really cool about this car it's through the whole span of automotive history. This model was made for three years. That's it. 1971, 72, and 73. This is the final year of this vehicle. It replaced the Buick Wildcat. That was kind of a sports large car that Buick had, and this is what they replaced it with. It's kind of a, got a sporty feel to it. It's a convertible, it's got lots of power. And there's some really cool other features about it I'm gonna go over with you guys. Early 71, these cars had an A9 and a B6 package, I guess you'd call it an option, where it had the stage one performance 455 and a manual transmission in this huge beast. That would have been awesome. I haven't, I haven't seen one of these cars before. I definitely haven't seen one with a manual transmission. That's just really special. 71 and 72 had the smaller bumpers, and in 73 it was mandated to have five mile per hour bumpers, what they called it. And this one has much larger bumpers. It has the little bumper stops up front. The back's a little different. So that, if you see these going down the road, and you see the big bumpers, you know, 73. If it has small ones, like 71 or 72. In 73, the base engine was actually a Buick 350 V8. 71 and 72 just had the 455, that's just all you got. The 455 was an option in this year. And luckily, this one has the 455. That's the way I would have it. Lots of torque, lots of get up and go power. As far as Buick is concerned, this is the absolute last of the convertibles until the 1982 Riviera. From this car to that car, there is no Buick convertibles. This is the last one till 82. There was 110,539 of these Centurions made in those three years. And that is quite a bit of cars, but for only three years, this is why I've not seen, seen one of these before. I've heard of them. It's really a, quite a treat to have it in the shop, guys. It's a really cool car. So we're gonna go through, let you guys check out the interior, take a walk around. We're gonna look under the hood. We'll place it on the lift and show you some of the things that's already been diagnosed, what we're going to fix, and what we're going to do to this car. I know you guys always enjoy a nice close-up look to one of these cars, because you're car guys like me. So without further ado, let's get the hood open on this thing. There we go. This is the four-barrel 455 that was an option in this car. Most everything is original on this car. It has had things replaced due to age, like the radiator, the air conditioning's been redone in the past. It's got a new smog pump, which doesn't surprise me, because they always seem to fail when you're out on a long trip and lock up on you and throw the belt. What I like about this, any of these cars, is it's stock as far as design. There's no weird stuff under here. There's no holly aftermarket aluminum intakes and headers and all this stuff. It's just the way it was when it left the factory. It even has the original air cleaner. And that's pretty rare for any of these older cars. Usually they've got some Edelbrock chrome air cleaner from AutoZone or something on it. This really, really, I, I really like the way this is left alone. As you can see, it's kind of wet around here. And one of the diagnoses I did was to figure out He's got some steering issues and some leaks. It's actually this pressure hose. If you look down in there, it's wet. 
the crimp has failed. It's spraying. It looks like it's been replaced recently, but it, it didn't hold up. So that's his uh, leak problem. Another issue he had was his washers didn't work, his windshield washers. And I've taken it apart. I have the cover off and looked inside. and All the little O-rings and seals are, are shot. So we're going to get that replaced and make his washer pump work again. In these years of General Motors, there was no electric pump. It's just a little piston that's mechanically pumped back and forth by a little cam here. Kind of a crude operation, but that's the way they were, and they work. They do a good job. But other than that, I haven't found any other serious issues up here. Really, it's been taken very good care of. The guy who owns this car is, is no cost isn't a concern. He wants it taken care of, he wants it right, and that's what we're gonna do for him. Well, let's get the hood closed and take a look at the rest of the car. See this emblem, the Centurion emblem? This car was so special, they didn't even have Buick emblems. You won't find anything Buick other than this. It says Buick on the grill. Most Buicks have the tri-shields, little three little shields here. They didn't even put their shields on it. They only put the Centurion symbol. It's pretty neat. Okay, we're gonna take a look around the car. It's not in showroom condition. It's not in museum quality like Euro Asian Bob's 78 Eldorado we just had in here. However, it is in very good condition. The paint's original, it's clean, the interior shows age, but it doesn't show misuse or abuse or tears or anything like that. It's clean and it's nice inside. So let's take a look around the car and then look inside. Look at those really cool wire wheels. They're not real. They're just hubcaps, but still really cool nonetheless. Centurion 455. convertible top is in very very good shape I don't know that it's been replaced or not I imagine it it has been but it very well could be original for this condition in Kansas this has to be a, a car that was garaged it was taken care of before the guy that owns it now owned it so on Euro Asian Bob's 78 Eldorado we saw that all the filler body extensions are all crumbled and which is nobody's fault, that's just what happened to them. These are still metal. This is back when they meant business. I, I like this. If I was gonna have an older car, I like all this metal. I really, really get excited about stuff like that. And here we have again, it's, it's a little faded due to age, but it's the original Centurion symbol. As you can see, the paint's not perfect, brand new looking. However, it is in pretty good shape. Oh, and this is back in the year where you didn't, you very likely didn't get a passenger mirror. They just didn't put them on. It's kind of weird. I, I've sat in cars like this with friends before and they're like, dude, your mirror's missing. I'm like, no. No, it's not missing. They never came with one. It's just kind of... They, you used your rear view mirror and your side mirror over there. So, I guess you could chalk it up to two lane roads. There wasn't four lanes, so you didn't need to look over in the ditch. Hey, Miss Wizard, let me get the door for you. Take a peek in here. Very, very nice. The dash isn't all beat up. The seats aren't torn. The carpet's in decent shape. This is a driver, guys. This is, this is one that you're not afraid to take it out and just drive it and enjoy it. It's not museum quality. However, it is very, very nice. The steering wheel's not all beat up. The gauges all work. The AC works. The heater works. It's got a cool CB radio. None of the glass is chipped or broke, cracked, or anything like that. And the back seat is not torn up, not beat up. The back window is not cracked or torn. The true survivor. What I really like about these big old cars, I love, love big old American cars. 
There's no Rolls Royce. There is no Range Rover. There is no Mercedes S-Class that will ride like these do. I don't care what you buy. I don't care if it's a $600,000 Rolls Royce Phantom, a new one. These cars are really, really awesome the way they ride. It isolates you from the road. You float down the road. You go over bumps, little cracks. You don't feel them. Now they do have really, like a yacht, like a boat, the steering's not all precise, but they weren't that way new. They, that's the way they were new, so. I really enjoy the way they ride. Let's get this thing on the lift and take a look on the underneath. Let me tell you guys a little joke. My mentor, the, he's an old Chrysler Master Tech from the years gone by, but he made mention of these old cars. He worked alongside a mechanic many, many years ago and the guy just didn't care. He didn't care about anything. He would kick these arms un, on the lift under the car. He didn't even look where they went. And he just started, started lifting. Wherever they went, it didn't matter. I guess on these old cars, it just reminded me of that. They have a full perimeter frame. I guess you could get away with it. It really is not gonna hurt a whole lot, but you do that on a modern car today, you're in huge trouble. I don't, I, he mentioned to me that that guy didn't last very much longer. His, his attitude was too poor. But sometimes on these cars, I just kind of get a giggle out of it, thinking about a guy just kicking the arms under and going for it. Well, let's get this thing up in the air. Well, let's go ahead and take a look. One of the things, I've already looked at this car, and one of the things I really enjoyed is it's not sloppy under here. It's not all nasty and dirty. The guy's been taking good care of it. This leak here, like we, we talked about up above, is the power steering hose leak. It's here to be addressed and taken care of so that this doesn't happen anymore. But. He, he mentioned about his steering felt a little loose, and when I diagnosed it, this center link, you have to buy the whole center link, but this joint, you can see it move up and down. This idler is bad, the center link is bad. I've already looked it all over, but we'll get that stuff fixed up and it'll tighten up his steering and he'll be back in business again. That was really the only huge leak that he had was that. And that's what some of this wetness is, is from the power steering as well. Really, the, under here, the only thing we're going to be addressing while it's here was the center leak and the idler arm that's loose and that hose that we see up above that's leaking. You can see that it's had a new fuel pump, new belts. We're going to do an oil change while it's here. Let's move on back. There's a little bit of wetness here. That's also from that power steering leak. It was just kind of just blowing in the wind all along here. But there is, everything else is nice and clean. This is what I call rusty crusty, and I don't mind that on an old car. I like to see that because it's dry. There's no leaks. There's no issues. It's just happy. The exhaust is in good shape. There's no holes in the floor. There's nothing torn up. We checked the U-joints. Everything was good on it. The transmission mount was good. The motor mounts were good. Like I said, guys, I've driven this car and it drives very, very nice. Here's a double carden joint. This is very common on these old Cadillacs, Buicks, Oldsmobiles. That was the way they could get the angle to be right at such a long distance. And that, that makes a nice, smooth, vibration free rotation. This seepage here you see on the differential is not from this the back cover, it's actually the weld right here. We're going to clean all this off and put some silicone in this weld and it will seal that off. That has taken years to do that. These spot welds on either side, you can see from the factory, that wasn't sealed perfectly. and just kind of seeps over time. We're going to take care of that for him. And there's one last thing we're going to do is, it looks like he's had new shocks put on and they didn't last because this one's streaming oil down it. I don't know how old they are. Maybe he had them put on five years ago. I, don't, I have no idea, but 
these are going to be replaced take care of this issue here but other than that that's it big gas tank yeah you need a big one on this thing and like the old days you fill it from your license plate dual exhaust from the factory the tires are in good shape the brakes are in good shape the whole car is in really really good shape so you can see that I have the, on the perimeter frame all my pads on the lift and I kept on these older cars like that guy I just joked about you could have just kicked the arms under here they would land here or they may push on this but this is solid too this is solid heavy heavy I mean it would lift the car it would work but man I I know if he that guy worked for me he would be unemployed pretty quickly I don't tolerate that attitude I just couldn't believe when he told me that story I was like wow the guy didn't care did he yep just kick kick the arms under there you can do that on these old cars, not on new ones. Well, thanks for following along with me on this, guys. I know you enjoyed it as much as I did. It's a really awesome car. Only three years they made them. It's just, just crazy. So I'm going to give you guys a little Christmas present and, and a complaint as well. We're going to move from the green car to the red one. Not going to be a whole big spiel about this, it's just an old truck the guy uses to haul leaves and stuff. But I've mentioned in videos prior how the early 90s and late 80s cars, you wouldn't think so, but parts are drying up. So this is a 93 F-150 with a 5 liter V8. Very, very common truck. Extremely common truck. You would think, oh, they got parts for these for days. They got parts on these. Not anymore. They're starting to dry this stuff up. They don't want you keeping this stuff on the road. The ECM is what went bad on this. I've got a new one in it and it runs perfect now. I went through two or three different parts suppliers. I tried Rock Auto at different places. They're not there. Not in stock. Discontinued. I finally got a hold of people I use a lot, CarQuest. And they did some digging and digging and digging and they found in the whole country, all 50 states of the union, two computers. One in Alabama, one in Florida. And they said, if you want one of these, when these are gone, that's it. You better take it while, while you can. I said, well, send it immediately. I'll take one of them. I have to have it. But after I hung up the phone, I was just like, it really is happening. They're turning their backs on these old cars. Stuff that like water pumps. Oh, yeah, they, they got 10 of those in stock. No, they don't. They might have one in stock in a large city. So just keep that in mind, you're looking for one of these old cars. The parts are starting to dry up. I'm seeing it more and more every year that goes by. The online program I use for my parts suppliers, I can look at their in-stock numbers. It'll say one in town, maybe one in the next town over, and one in the state or in their chain or whatever you call it. I'm frequently running up against these older cars seeing zero, 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 none. I have to call them. Say, hey man, can, can you dig around and find one of these parts? And they're like, yeah, and they call an hour later, yeah, we found one. We, we had one way off in a warehouse somewhere. It's crazy. I know it sounds crazy, but that's just the way it is. So, being that I'm a car guy, I grew up with these cars. These things were all over the road when I was a kid. And it's just kind of sad to me to see people going like this and turning their back to it and like, screw those old things. Nobody needs to have those anyway. I think that's not very cool, but it, it is what it is. There finally came a point when Model A's were around that they just said, you know what, as far as large countrywide supply goes, we're done. Thanks again for following along. Sorry about the little rant, but I want, to, I want you guys to see this stuff that I'm seeing in the industry. I want you to experience I want you to know it too. So that's a really cool car, and this is, for what it is, it's a decent truck. Any tools that I've used in previous videos you've seen, or you want to know what tools do I use, check my Amazon affiliates link below. All the tools I use are listed there for sale. If you're wanting gift ideas or other people are wanting gift ideas, send them the link to my Amazon affiliates page. I don't put stuff on that I don't recommend. There's nothing on there that's junk. It's all useful stuff that I have in my toolbox right now that I wouldn't run my shop without. So it's really cool, cool tools for sale there. We got t-shirts, we got coffee mugs, those are gift ideas. We got 
uh, hats, all kinds of cool stuff for sale there too. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button and hit the little bell. We got many more cool cars coming in the shop and many more cool videos to come. So again, thanks for watching.